Hello, my name is Jan Wood. Welcome to today's episode of Coffee Break. And today the special guest is Melinda. And Melinda is my website designer. That's right. So what we're going to do today is launch the new Woodland Productions website. Yay! <laughs> Designed by Melinda of Fine Line Design. Yay. And let's go and have a little sticky beak, Melinda. Okay, I'll show you a couple of features. Okay. So you can go to programs. You can go to the coffee break here. Um, and th I think this is a pretty good feature of the website. Um, on the side here, you can view every single episode that's ever been made. Um, we can go to, that's the little intro that you see on your Coffee Break TV show every time, so you recognise it. But if we go to one of the years, it has a complete list of every single Coffee Break series and what they were about and all the links. So all of these um, episodes, each thing has something about each episode and then when you click through, you will get the information about the episode here so you will go directly to the um, to the website of the person you're interviewing in the coffee break so if you want more information about each show this is where you go you go to the coffee break page this coffee break page and then you just look up the series you want so whatever year so all the way down to 2009 we've got at the moment because before 2009 even though coffee break was um, being filmed we weren't digital were we no they're all analog so, the, of course, we haven't got the analogue up there yet. That's a long-term um, job. Um, but I think the biggest feature about this website for Jan is that um, you wanted to get your programs on here. And so we have uploaded a whole heap of series, um, probably about, there's about 33 of them up there at the moment, and wow. we will continue to upload over the years. Um, so any time you want to go and watch a whole show, Here's one of the shows. You can just put your mouse over the top and it'll tell you what the episode is and what um, it's about. So there we go. We can just go and have a look at this. Um, and then when you, if you want to watch that show, you click on it and then the movie will come up there and it'll start to play when you want to play. So here we go. We can have a play. And you can watch Coffee Break anytime you like, in your bedroom, on your laptop. You don't have to wait for it to be on TV um, community television because it's right here for you to watch again anytime you like um, and that's the main reason why you needed to get the website up updated and running isn't it Jan to get it to get some of your shows on online yeah Melinda I'm absolutely gobsmacked it's fabulous what you've done yeah. there we go <laughs> yeah. I think the the most important thing about websites uh, that um, that that most people if you want return visitors and people to come and see is that you make sure you maintain and keep it up to date. So while we have um, publications, we have programs, there's some publications here, um, just a little bit about the books that Jan's written and also the contact details. So if you do want to write in to Jan at all and um, and talk about the productions or if you'd like to sponsor Coffee Break, we're looking for a sponsor so that we can constantly maintain and update this website because we are custodians of all of these wonderful programs and we do want them up there in public archive for the public to watch. Well, I'm absolutely gobsmacked. I think it's fabulous. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this is what you do for a living. You're yes. a um, freelance web designer. Yeah, and a graphic designer, and I do websites as well as other things, yeah. Yeah, and I tell you what, I'm so happy with my website. I thought what I'll do now is start a coffee break newsletter. Oh, that's a good idea, actually. So maybe yeah. you could help me with that. Absolutely. I can do newsletters as well, and that will keep people up to date with what's going on. Uh -huh. Now, you've been on Coffee Break before. Yes, I have. And you've talked about your graffiti books yes street art and I'm doing some tours and things like that so that's fun so you do street tours of the inner city of Sydney yeah that's right I live in Newtown and Newtown's full of um, graffiti and street art and it's always interesting to see walk around the streets and look at yeah since you came on the program when I go places I 
have an eye for street art now. Before, I didn't really notice it that I think much. that's the main thing. Some people just walk down the street, you catch the train, you don't really notice stuff. But when someone points things out to you, all of a sudden you notice how much is around. Yeah. I know, particularly um, if you go by train, yeah. how much street art is out there. Yeah, it's just a lot around, mm. definitely. Yep, that and just keeps me off the streets. <laughs> I mean, I'm not designing. I go and get inspiration on the street. Actually. I know. I've been out driving with Melinda and she'll stop the car and grab the camera yeah. and go and take a it's, photo. It's not good driving behind me, actually, because I could just stop at any time. <laughs> oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you're at the moment you're doing the Woodland Productions website. That's right. It's taken a few months to build. I um, know, and you didn't yeah. have much of a brief. I just said, you know, go and do it, go and do it. Yeah, but I kind of did have a brief from you. You did want to get um, all the digital um, videos up somewhere where people could watch them. I know, because the future of um, broadcasting is quite up in the air. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know if community TV is going to keep going. So um, with that is a loss of a lot of shows. So the whole um, idea, I think what you said to me is you want to get your shows online. Um, and we've managed to do that. We've managed to get quite a few of them, but not all of them. We've got years and years of shows to go. I, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't have, uh, I would go and lie in bed with my laptop and yeah. watch TV, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I'm trying to stop being such an old dag. Well, and I'm trying to move into the 21st century. Sure, sure. I say to people, I was much more... Um, comfortable in the 20th century <laughs> but yeah. we're 15 years into the new millennium and yeah. I really have to lift my act. That's right well um, I think that I've made the site a simple easy to navigate site um, and it only is a matter of getting onto the programs page and then clicking on the program you want to watch and it'll just play for you and the best thing about being in this century and not the you know 20th century is that um, you can actually watch it any time you want so if you're busy and coffee break isn't on or is on and you're too busy you've got to go somewhere or having a, a tea party or something like that and you can't watch coffee break you can just go and watch it later online and that is what's so good about the technology we have today I know it's amazing I mm. just can't get my head around <laughs> I can I love it <laughs> I think it was five when television came out yeah. and I got up on a Sunday morning and there was this box in the lounge room that I'd never seen before. Yeah. It was a box on four legs. Yeah. And they I, were very large then too, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> we were one of the first people around here to get a TV. Really? And I was absolutely fascinated. What I used to do is I draw the TV with a bunch of flowers on top and on the TV screen, I'd draw a TV with a vase with a bunch of flowers ah, on top. And and watching the TV, watching the TV. Inside the TV. Sure. I repeated it over and over and over, and I was only five or six. That's interesting. I thought, isn't that interesting where yeah. I am now making TV? Yeah. I was fascinated with TV and back in And there you are. You're still on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and you can't put a doily on top of my TV anymore. I can't no, put a bunch of flowers. You can't put flowers on a TV <laughs> or a doily, no. you probably put it better to put it in front of the TV because half the content on the TV isn't worth watching anyway. That's why I like to be able to choose what I want to watch when I want to watch it. Okay, well, I think my problem was that my parents said the attitude was in those days in the 1950s and the 60s don't touch it you might break oh, it oh yeah okay of know? course <laughs> yeah so you get very nervous about working yeah. any electrical equipment and yeah. it's stuck with me i don't know if i'm the only person in the world or whether it's no. a common thing for someone in my age group. see i don't i press every single button until it either works or breaks <laughs> <laughs> but somewhere along the line things tend to work <laughs> more than they break you can't break the internet i mean the internet's always running and working um, you can't physically break it um, you can click different buttons and go into more pages and different places and different areas but it will always still be there when you go back so I mean, that's a good thing to know all right well i'm very impressed <laughs> thank, thank you. you very much and if I'm anyone glad you like it if anyone would like 
That's their right. website updated? Yeah, well, I, I do do custom-built websites. So, I mean, uh, like I spoke to you, um, we talked about Woodlands, how you got the name Woodlands, that's where the wood came into it and all that sort of stuff. So I did custom-built that website just to suit you and what your specific needs are. Um, you can buy w websites online um, but that are quite cheap, but they're not custom-built. So if you have a business, um, you need to think about what you specifically want to gain from your website um, and then build it accordingly because otherwise it's just a website and why do people go there you know mm. you need to you need to really think about what what uses um, you need for your website before you build it yeah I'm an aging baby boomer and I'm not very confident with this new technology and Stuart's come around to sort me out that's right everyone needs a Stuart I think Stuart I've been a bit of a challenge haven't I because I'm a, I must be the most technical logically phobic person that you've ever met not at all not at all yeah, it's worse than me no <laughs> not at all everyone has troubles and and um you just need someone that, that does it for a living i think to get you on the right track and then you're good to go okay now you've worked miracles here and i'm on track mm -hmm. see my problem is that my technology is old and i've had to update what I just did then was set up Jan's email on her new Mac book um, and uh, there, there's her inbox and it's good to go. I just have to set up the other emails because there's a couple of them. So that will be, there'll be three email boxes there. Um, yeah, so there's info at Woodland Productions, Jan at Woodland Productions and Coffee Break at Woodland Productions. Yes. Stuart, do I need three email accounts? I know the website's got two, but anyway. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt to have three. You okay. Know, it doesn't hurt at all. It'll all come into the one inbox anyway, so it'll be fine. And see, I get a lot of junk mail. Mm-hmm. What we can do is um, set up the spam folder, so the the spam will, will go into the the spam folder. So we'll set up. Okay, and do I have to empty the spam folder? Yes, you do. You do. You have to empty it from time to time. It's just it's just sorting it out for you. So it doesn't actually delete it automatically, um, but yeah. it just sorts it out for you. My name's Jan Wood and you're watching Coffee Break. And my special guest is Stuart Graham, who is a Hi. whiz kid on fixing bugs and glitches and stuff like that. Yes, so um, I've got my own business now called Stu Tech Industries and I look after um, people uh, that need need help, you know, getting their emails connected, their internet connected, and <laughs> I know, uh, I know, Stuart. I was a bit of a challenge. Like I called Stuart. Oh, I need you, Stuart. I haven't had an email come in for a week, and um, you get really paranoid. You know, I think to yourself, well, maybe someone's hacked my site, and maybe someone mm. wants to cause me damage. But you found the problem, which was yeah, which was delete it and add it again so sometimes just turning it off and on really does work <laughs> okay because my computer was just jammed with spam spam lots of spam so you've been doing this for quite a few years now haven't you yes yeah quite a few years now and i i sort of did a, a bit of a a stint with apple so i i learned a lot about apples as well and, and, uh -huh. I, and i've done 10 years on windows machines as well so i can do windows as well and you wouldn't believe this, Stuart. I'm technically incompetent, but... I don't it, think you are. Oh, <laughs> so. in 1970, I had a job at the Sydney Stock Exchange as their trainee computer technician. Right. I was going to be their brainwave of the future. Mm -hmm. I was really very young. But the computers at the Sydney Stock Exchange in 1970 took up an entire floor. They were great big things like huge freezers, big refrigerators. And they had a whole floor of girls with the Tiki Tech cards, Compatech. Mm -hmm. So they were punching holes into these carts which were the computer trades for the day yeah. and then they would get taken upstairs and fed into the computer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but 
someone told me that there is more memory on an iPhone now than there was in one of those computers back 30, 40 years ago. Of course, yeah, 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 of course. There's a, there's a, a law that says that, that computing power is going to double constantly and so it's, it just keeps on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> oh, the <Yeah>. mind <laughs> boggles. Oh, Stuart, I need you. Now, I bought a laptop. Yes. And I couldn't access emails on it because I couldn't remember my password. It's a common problem. Everyone's got to write their passwords down in a little book somewhere so they've got them all together. You need your email passwords. You need your password to log into the computer. So these these are the things that you sort of have to have in one spot in a little book so you know, you know, know. You know them. But we're all a bit paranoid, you know. What if someone breaks into your house and steals your book with all your passwords and oh, pin no. numbers? If you put it in a drawer, I think you're pretty safe. <laughs> I don't know. I worry about things. I had a very active imagination. I can imagine <laughs> the worst case scenario. I torture myself. But anyway, as of this moment, I'm up and running. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you do house calls. Yes, I do house calls. And... Um, I like to specialise in special needs people and, and elderly people who want to get on the internet and talk to their their loved ones on Facebook and things like that so I can get them all set up and get their internet going so that they can um, yeah. communicate with their families and, you know, see pictures of their grandkids and things like that. So. I know. I know quite a few 90-year-olds that are very computer literate and f- in for their age group. It's wonderful. Mm, Internet mm. shopping, Facebook. Yeah, I mean, well, really... reading books on an iPad is amazing too. It's, it's a great way to experience books now. So. so instead of going physically to the library, you just download, download the, the book. book. Yeah. And I think mm. the libraries now have a book downloading facility. Yes, they do. Yeah, um, Most libraries, it's the one app that you get and you can borrow your books. Uh-huh. Just, just like you borrowed them, so, uh-huh. and you've got a certain amount of time to read them, and then they delete. Yeah, it's a whole different world, and I remember when the millennium clicked over, or it might have been before that. Someone said to me, "Jan, if you are computer illiterate at the beginning of the twenty first century, that's the equivalent of being illiterate at the beginning of the twentieth century, because in this day and age, Stuart, we need computer skills for everything. Everything, yeah, computers are." part of our lives now and touch yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was, got my new laptop and <laughs> i took it to the apple shop because it was broke because it's doing this and i realized that it's not a touch screen no, <laughs> got, so a, i packed it up and i not snuck, an iPad. snuck no. out of there real quick I but some windows machines now have touch screens so you, you know i know apple will have one soon i'm sure i know you go to the atm Touchscreen. Mm, I mean, mm. it just, it's, become, yeah. And you can do your own, mm. um, go to the supermarket and do your own um, adding up and, well, mm. you don't add up, but, you know, you push the buttons yeah. and whatever. Mm. Mm. I, 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 when I was a girl, this was stuff called science fiction. This was Star Trek, Dick Tracy, you know. It, it, but now... Mm. It's reality. So I'm living in the space age. Mm. Mm. And it just hit me all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't even a really slow, gradual... It's funny you say Dick Tracy because he had his, his phone watch and they've just released... Apple have released a, an Apple watch and um, you can make phone calls through it and things like that. So it is really coming true. It is. But it happened really fast. You know, it's um, usually, well, I don't know, the explosion of it, the technological explosion happened within a very short time. Mm. Like, for instance, the smartphone technology, that's only been around for about, what, five or six, not very long, not very long, and people Mm. are emailing on their phone and Mm. taking photos on their phone. Yeah, yeah, you can do everything on your phone now. Yeah, That's what they're called, smartphones. 
yeah, but I tell people my smartphone is so dumb that it forgets to come out with me. <laughs> I just leave it at home on the table. <laughs> when I went to buy it. I it's mean, kind of a good thing leaving your technology behind. You get you, you, you freer for a while, you know. It's I good. know. I was on the bus the other day and I'm doing my knitting. I was the only person on the bus not doing this. Yeah. I thought, oh, I'm having quality me time. Yeah. I'm knitting, so I'm meditating and I'm enjoying looking out the window. Mm. And there's all these other people that are just, their heads are... Right in their devices, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought it's... It has its plus, but it also has its negatives. Negatives, yeah. I, th- I think people put a, an emotional value on their, their devices that shouldn't be there because they're just devices. There's all the electric, electromagnetic radiation. We're living in a sea of Wi-Fi. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I guess we are, but I don't think it really affects us. How do we know? Oh, I, I think they've done studies. I don't think that really affects us at all. Well, I mean, wherever you go now, there's a mobile phone tower. Yeah. There's few places, well, on the urbanised part of Australia where you can go and you're out of mobile phone range, mm-hmm. which means that those little Wi-Fis aren't hanging around. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Because we don't know the long-term effects I say to people, it's only been the last 50 years that people have lived in high-rise. We don't know the long-term effects of someone living on the 100th floor. Mm. I mean, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, we're learning, we're learning. And we, are, we are getting results and, and you know, um, just going up in a plane you get radiated. So, yeah. so it, it's... Yeah. Maybe we're all getting fried and we don't know. <laughs> I think we're all right. Oh, good. That's reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if anyone needs a, what would you say, a bug buster? Yeah. A virus buster? Oh, I'm really good at getting rid of um, viruses from Windows machines. As, as I said, Macs don't really get them. But um, Windows machines get a lot of viruses and I know how to set them up and clean them up and I know. make sure that they're... Yeah Stuart, yeah, Stuart, if your business depended on your email and you hadn't had an email for a week, like that was my problem, mm. you could get a little bit hysterical. Yeah. But I am so used to being um, slapped by things not working. Mm. <laughs> it mm. doesn't work. I just go worry about it later. I call Stuart. Yeah. Yeah, well, Jan, you had 3,000 spam Spams in your spam box, so we just had to delete them, just had to get rid of them. <laughs> and Stuart has helped me remember my PIN number. Yes, your passwords. My password. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll write them all down in a little book for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I'm real. I woke up this morning and I thought, oh, what if I forget my PIN number? Wouldn't that be awful? Yeah. I did that once. I thought, wouldn't it be awful if I forgot my PIN number? And would you believe it? I couldn't remember what my PIN number was. Yeah, sometimes you have a brain. Freeze, yeah. don't you? Yeah. yeah. So if anyone would like to contact you about your computer healing service, mm-hmm. what would they do? Um, they just call me. Okay. On 0439500291. Okay. And I can help them out. And they can't email you because their computer's broken down. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, usually, usually the best way to start communications is a call. Okay. Well, thank you very much. You've put me back on track. That's good.